Okay, hi, nice to meet you all. Uh, thanks for coming to my talk. I'm going to talk about how to release open source library. So my name is Unje. Yes, it's uh, very hard to uh, write down my name in English alphabet, but anyway, my name is pronounced Unje. And I was born and raised in South Korea. And I moved to Singapore in late 2016. And then I moved to France in 2019. And in France, I'm working for Agulia. So for those of you who don't know Agulia, Agulia is a hosted search as a service that gives developers a complete toolkit for building search into their products. So in Avolia, we have infrastructure, engine, database, and so many things uh, on the backend side. And on top of that, we have REST APIs. Uh, they are, for example, for indexing records and searching for records and etc. And on top of REST API, we have API clients. Uh, we provide API clients for many different languages like PHP, Ruby, JavaScript, Python, Kotlin, .NET, Java, Golang, Scala, iOS, Android. So we are uh, doing lots of things for API clients. And on top of JavaScript API clients, uh, we built something called instant search. So it's a kind of JavaScript component. So instead of calling search API methods, uh, we provide components so, so that you just can plug in them. Like there are search box, hits, filters, paginations, etc. So I am working in instant search team and in instant search uh, we maintain instant search js for vanilla javascript and we have react instant search and view instant search angular instant search etc we my team manages uh, so many open source libraries and we need to release them so you can guess uh, where my talk is coming from. So everyone loves coding, right? So probably uh, most of you love coding and some of you code after work uh, as a side project. And there are some people who are not developers, but they just uh, do coding because they like it. So. Yeah, so many people love coding. Uh, and I think many people like testing. You know, uh, TDD, which is test-driven development. So many people are uh, excited about testing and writing tests. And some people like debugging because we encounter bugs all the time and sometimes it's very hard to uh, figure out the reason and once we do and then once we fix it then we get this uh, enormous joy and debugging is uh, a little bit likable but people barely like releasing especially libraries so I don't think I have heard of someone saying, I love releasing. I love releasing. After work, I will release something. And on Friday, I'll release something. I don't think I've ever heard of someone saying that. Okay, before uh, diving into releasing libraries, uh, what about releasing apps? There are many CI, CD services 
continuous integration, continuous deployment, like uh, Nellify, Versal, formerly Zeit, and Bamboo, and Jenkins, etc. So releasing apps are quite automated and we have uh, some sort of flows. So I guess it's okay-ish. But especially we don't like releasing libraries. I guess there are many reasons. Uh, we can, I'll talk about just some of them. For example, we worry about bugs. When we release something, there's a chance that we release bugs. And how do we prevent it? Yes, we need to write good code and not make a bug in the first place. Or we can write good tests to uh, find out the bugs before releasing. So actually, this is uh, something totally out of the scope of this talk. So I'm going to skip this. I can't help you with that. So we also worry about making mistakes. There are many things to do when we release libraries and there are chances that we might make mistakes. For example, uh, maybe I'm using wrong node version. Yeah, it sometimes happens, right? And sometimes I forgot to git pull so I could release something outdated. Yes, this is very scary. And sometimes I hit NPM publish, but I forgot to put dash dash tab beta. So actually this happened to me once and it was a very scary moment for me. So I was supposed to release something as a beta, but I actually did it as a stable version. And sometimes node modules, this folder gives us headache. Uh, if we switch branches back and forth, sometimes these folders get uh, weird and it's very uh, not noticeable. So we could make some mistakes during the process. And another reason, uh, we're blocked when, you, when we release we are literally blocked. For example, uh, I need to run lint, unit test, end-to-end -end test, etc. I have to wait for them. And this is a piece of screenshot <laughs> from my uh, library uh, from CircleCI. And actually, this end-to-end -end test takes only about 4 minutes and 30 seconds. So it's not that long, but it could take much longer if you write uh, very many and long running end-to-end -end tests. And actually, even if it's only four minutes, once I run it and I see it's going to take more than a minute, then I automatically hit command tab. And I go to Twitter and read some Twitter and like some Twitters and reply some Twitters. And then like 20 minutes later, I go back to terminal and it's already finished. So we are uh, in this kind of situations. So, and we also release from the base branch. But when I run some stuff like uh, testing or building, I need to wait for this process to finish. Then it means I cannot switch to another branch and I cannot work on other things. Of course, I could uh, clone this repository into a whole different directory and then I work there, but it's not a very good situation. So I told you some reasons uh, why we don't like releasing libraries. So let me tell you some things to do when releasing libraries. So these, these are what happened. So if you haven't heard of Semver, it means semantic version. So normally versions are like 
v 1.2.3. It means one is major version, two is minor version, three is patch version. So we need to update each piece of number semantically so that uh, we don't break uh, users' applications. So in order to achieve this, uh, many library authors are using something called conventional commits. So conventional commits, uh, literally it means uh, you need to write common messages in conventional way. For example, there can be a common message looking like this, fix colon should use fallback for scope slots with etc. Or fix compiler, remove the warning for valid blah, blah, blah. And in this case, this compiler is called scope. And another example, chore, update sponsors. Yet, this is very uh, not important much. And there can be docs at types directory to contributing that markdown. And we could have fit, uh, which means feature, feature SSR, inherit attribute supporting SSR. So again, SSR is a scope here. And we could have a breaking change commit. So in the commit message, if there's breaking change string is there, then it means it's going to be a breaking change and we need to bump the major version. So again, if there are coming messages starting with fix, chore, docs, refactor, past, etc., it means it's a patch update. And if a coming message, message starts with fit, it means it's a minor update. And if there is a coming message containing breaking change, it means it's a major update. So conventional commit uh, is inspired by Angular. And now it's used by so many open source libraries and applications like Vue.js, Webpack, Angular, Nuxt, Gatsby, Jest, and so many libraries. And once you write common messages in this convention, then you can use conventional changelog. So if you don't know what conventional changelog is, it's a tool uh, to generate changelogs. If you have seen some changelogs looking like this, I guess it's probably uh, made with conventional changelog. So let's take another example. So we have uh, these common messages. And let's say chore release v0.15.0 is the last release. And we're going to release uh, after that. So uh, when we generate change logs, uh, chores and docs are not that important. So we don't put those commits into the change log. So we uh, skip, 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 skip. And then we just use these three common messages to generate the change log. And it will look like this. So this commit is there, and this commit is there, and this commit is there. And you see this error, that scope is there in bold style. And since we have a feature commit, it means it's a minor update. So the version has changed from 0.15.0 to 0.16.0. And when we release libraries, uh, we probably need to put dash dash tag when we release like alpha, beta, dev, canary, RC versions. 
you're you're not always releasing something as a stable version, but sometimes alpha or beta to uh, test something in a restricted uh, group. So let's go back to instance search. So in instant search, we had source slash script slash publish.js file. Uh, we used this file to release instant search. So when we run this script, it does the following things like, is the working directory clean? If not, it throws an error and it quits. And uh, after that, it update the version in package.json because we are using conventional changelog, I mean, conventional commits, then it can semantically figure out what the next version is. And then it updated changelog with conventional changelog. And then it commit the change. And we run test and we build it and we publish it to npm registry and sometimes dash dash tag beta and after the release uh, we create a git tag and then we push it back to the git repository so uh, we have source slash script slash publish.js but uh, we had this file in instant search.js repository it means we have the same file in react instant search view instant search and angular instant search and the problem is they are not the same they are slightly different we uh, modified each file as time goes and we uh, put some tweaks there. So it was very hard to maintain and it was not that easy. And with that script, I still made mistakes. Like the thing, things I told you, it, it, like node versions and node modules folder and things like that, yarn versions. So. I still make mistakes and I am still nervous with that script because things can go wrong and I don't know if it will go right or not. And I'm still blocked because I have to wait for this script to finish and it doesn't take that long, but anyway, I have to look at the terminal and wait for it. And I cannot work on other things. So it's blocking me. Then what are the other options? So I started to look for other options to automate the process a little bit more. For example, uh, we have MP. Uh, I'm worried, uh, I'm not going to pronounce his name, but many of you probably have heard of his name. Yeah, he uh, has been doing so much great work uh, and what well, MP is one of them, and it's it says uh, a better NPM publish, and it is it is really a better NPM publish. So it does uh, its job in a very simple way: uh, clean up installing dependencies and running tests, bumping version, publishing package, pushing tags. They are very similar, but uh when i run it it asks me the new version so i have to carefully choose the correct next version and again i need to wait until it's done so it doesn't quite uh, resolve the problems that i have another option is semantic release semantic release it's a fully automated version management and package publishing so in its documentation it shows uh, the steps like verify conditions get last release and analyze commits 
and verify release, generate notes, create the tag, prepare, fish, notify. Yeah, it does a very good job. But if you take a look at this, uh, it says fully automated. It means there is no chance for me to intervene. So for example, I wrote a wrong coming message before, like it was supposed to be a feature release, but I accidentally typed fix. Then the version is going to be wrong. And I don't have any chance to fix this because it's fully automated. So I needed a good balance between something totally manual and something fully automated. So what can we do about this? So I came up with a whole different process. So in this process, I break it down into three parts. Part one, prepare. And part two, review. And part three, trigger. Okay, part one, prepare. So in this part, uh, we get the next version. So we can figure out the next version because we write coming messages in that convention. And then we can check out to a staging branch like git checkout dash b releases slash v 1.2.3. And in that staging branch, we can update the version in package.json and in some other files as well. And then we can update the change log. And in that staging branch, we commit the change. Then we can create a pull request from this staging branch back to the base branch. So this is the part one. And part two is review. Literally, we can review the pull request and we'll have some status checks like this. So uh, like for me, in case uh, of my, I use Circle CI, so it can run some bunch of tests on GitHub and I can perform extra tests like with code sandbox CI, Pika CI, etc. So if you don't know this, uh, I'll introduce you to a code sandbox CI. So if you integrate code sandbox CI into your repository, whenever you create a new pull request, it gives us a comment like this, and it builds the temporary version of the library. So I can install a temporary version like this into any uh, project, and it also gives me a sandbox, but with this temporary version. So I can use uh, this temporary version to validate the new feature and I can send it to the customer to see if it works on their side, etc. And we can also add more comments to this pull request. Uh, for example, we can update the change log because conventional change log updates the change log with the coming messages. But sometimes you want to refine the message and you want to add something or you want to fix a typo, etc. So you can add more comments as you want. And once it's done, you can squash and merge the PR. So on GitHub, you have this button to squash and merge. So if you do that, then a new commit is added like cure column release v 1.2.3 so that's the part two and part three trigger so your ci or cd is triggered by that new commit that new commit was added so your ci is triggered then 
that CI can run a script. And the script can be something like npm run build and npm publish, sometimes dash dash tag beta or alpha. And after that, it can create a git tag and it can push the tag back to the remote. So let's uh, review the whole process. So we update the version, we update the change log, and we commit the change, and we run test, and we build it, and we publish it, and we create a git tag, and we push it to the remote. So this is the whole process, right? And this part is part one, and this is part two, and this is part three. So that whole process is broken down into three parts. So in this new process, we are less blocked. So if you look at this again, in these three parts, part one is only running on my machine. And part two is on GitHub. And part three is on CI or CD. So on my machine, only part one. And it probably takes less than a minute. So I'm less blocked, obviously, right? And I'll make less mistakes. Like in this whole process, actually part two and part three, they are not uh, my or your responsibility because I run only part one on my machine. And uh, it makes me less nervous because at part two, it's on GitHub and I can review this pull request together with my colleagues or with community members. So this uh, whole new process uh, gives us very big improvements. And what if we can automate part one and part three? So I introduce you to ShipJS. So ShipJS, uh, I created ShipJS to automate part one and three. And part one is ShipJS prepare. So you just run this command and it does the, all the tasks in the part one and creates a pull request. So it's you. And part two, you can review the pull request on GitHub by yourself or with your colleagues. And part three, when the new commit is added, your CI or CD will run this ship.js trigger command and it will do the rest. So now you see the whole picture, right? Uh, I've been releasing ShipJS with ShipJS. Yeah, that's uh, funny, but very uh, obvious. And let me show you uh, how I release ShipJS with ShipJS. So recently its version was 0.20.0-beta.3. And I wanted to release it as a stable version, 0 0.20.0. So let me show you a video. I recorded this because I was too scared to do that uh, in live coding. So I'll play the video for you. So you see this version, it's 0.20.0 beta 3. And if you see, there is a release script which calls ship.js prepare. And I run yarn run release. And it pulls from remotes and fetching tags and pushing back to remotes. And it shows 
the current version is that and next version is that is it correct uh, normally when you release beta versions or alpha versions then only the last number gets incremented so it assumed that the next version is going to be beta 4 but actually in this case i want to get out of the beta and release it as a stable so i just say no and then i type the next version okay then it's creating a staging branch and updating the change log and commit it and then pushing to the remote and creating pull request so now we see this pull request it's automatically open as well and we have some informations there and it runs some tasks and to make it quick i'll just uh, ignore it and just merge it but don't do that in your production so i just squash and merge and it will add a new commit into the base branch which is main in this case and we have this chore release uh, that version commit and shift.js trigger task job is running so if we go back to the code and check the circuit ci config we have a uh, release if needed workflow and it calls this job only on main branch and it does very simple tasks like checking out and doing some yarn works and yarn shift.js trigger so it's actually triggering shift.js to release so it installs some dependencies and now uh, shift.js trigger is being called and it's building and publishing to npm registry and creating a git tag and now the tag is pushed to the remote you see here so it's successful so we can go to npm and refresh and we see this uh, new version is released so uh, it's pretty straightforward and it's quite easy and if you go to releases tab and uh, you'll see this new release is added as well so right uh, let me show you then how do you integrate shipjs into your library to show you that uh, I created a dummy library, which is called ngm math library. It doesn't do much job. And now its version is 0.1.0. I just created, created this library, but I haven't released it to NPM registry yet. So the version file says this but actually this library is not on npm yet and i want to release it as 0 0.1.0 okay so let me I'll play the video again so in this library uh, we have this simple function and its version is that for now and we're going to keep this version and release it as 0 0.1.0 so let's go to the documentation and we have getting started section and we have a command npx shift.js setup it helps you add shift.js into your project so it asks what is your base branch and it asks which ci to configure and uh, i'll choose so called ci you can choose github actions or nothing and schedule your release via circle ci uh, i'll say no to this uh, you'll you can learn it from the documentation later 
So it's finished. So it installs Shift.js as dev dependency. So if you see here, you can see Shift.js added there. And we have new release script, uh, which is calling Shift.js prepare. And in this case, we don't need a dedicated config file and it created a Surface CI config. So if you take a look at this, it does, it has one workflow and it calls a job shift.js trigger and it's only called on master branch. And as you see earlier, it does very simple job like checking out and installing yarn and managing its cache. And it runs yarn shift.js trigger. So let me add, commit this change and push to the remote. And refresh uh, Surface CI and let me set up this project. So add this config variable uh, manually and start building. So uh, you see shift.js trigger is running and it's installing some dependencies and shift.js trigger and you see uh, an error. You need to specify GitHub token as an environment variable. Actually, the reason is because I forgot to do the last step. So open the terminal and it says you still need to finish setting up as CI and there is a link to the documentation. And it basically shows you how to configure Circle CI, uh, which is already done by chip.js setup command. And we need to configure two tokens, uh, which is NPM token and GitHub token. So let's start with NPM token. So go to npm and go to auth tokens and create a token for read and publish. And by the way, uh, after recording this video, I have revoked the token. So don't try to uh, read that token and try to use it. Uh, it's already gone. So go back to circle CI and project settings and environment variables. And the name is npm auth token and paste it. And we need to uh, add GitHub token as well. So go to GitHub and you can say release inj math library and select the repository scope and generate. Also, this token is gone and you can add it GitHub token and paste it. So now we're done with Surface CI. And uh, we can add the GitHub token on your local machine uh, to work with ShipJS. So GitHub token and paste it. And we want to have this file inside this git ignore so that we because we don't want to commit this token into the repository so we update uh, this git ignore file and now we can uh, yarn wrong release so let's release this library for the first time So it says git tag v0.1.0 doesn't exist. Yes, it's uh, obvious because I just created this repository and that version was uh, just automatically written by the initial command. And I don't, I haven't released it yet. So I don't have any tag and uh, from which commit do you want to release? So 
it's my first release so i'm just going to choose the last one and as you see i'll just release as this version as the current version so i choose the the initial commit and is this next version correct no uh it says the next version is going to be 0.1.1 but in this case we're just doing uh, releasing as the same version so there are some things to do when you use ShipJS for the first time to make uh, the conventions aligned but after this initial release everything uh, is going to be much uh, smoother in the second round so it's updating change log and pushing to the staging branch and it just created a pull request here so we see some basic information in this precast description. And uh, when merging this precast, you need to squash and merge so that the title starts with chore release v0.1.0. And if you uh, click this, uh, you can see more details on how to do that. So, by default, it's creating a merge commit, but we don't want to do that, but we want to squash and merge. But instead of doing that, uh, I could configure this repository. So go to settings and scroll down and we can disable other two buttons. So this repository will have only uh, squash and merge button enabled. So you see, button is changed and you cannot choose the other options. And if you go to the files, uh, now we don't have much of the change log there because we haven't done anything. So let's update the change log. Initial release. And docs update change log. I can push and if I re refresh, uh, you can see the change there. And let's, and that should be committed as uh, that message. Okay, then in Circle CI, we see this new commit is added to the master branch, and that uh, task is running. And now it's triggering ShipJS to release. And it's publishing to NPM registry. And it's creating a Git tag. And it pushed the tag to the remote. So let's refresh this GitHub. And we see this new tag, right? And uh, if we search for unje math library on npm you see this new version was released a minute ago yes so it's working fine okay so let's uh, try a little bit more so i want to add a new feature which is a subtract uh, yeah it's a very simple function which is just subtracting two numbers so the comment message should be fit colon uh, add subtract function and I can just run yarn run release and now we are adding a new feature so it's supposed to be a minor update so the next version is correct and it's pushing to remote and new pull request and you see that version change there and it's minor update and this command will be called to publish to npm registry and now uh, we have change log there in this case because we have conventional comment message and version is updated and if you click that link can actually change actually compare the changes 
since the last release. So if you, you can even see this uh, code change as well. So merging this PR will trigger another release. So again, chip.js trigger, installing dependencies and building the library and publishing to NPM, git tag. So again, I refresh it and you see this new tag and NPM, you can see the new version and let me do a little bit more. Uh, this is the last change in this library. So chore add log, it's a very uh, chore task. And let me create a ship.js config file. So if you see this documentation, we have a bunch of useful configurations. And in this case, I'm going to do some extra work on updating version. So let me just copy this and paste it and just leave only important parts there. And whenever a version is updated, I'll just create or update source slash version.ts file. And the file will export the version as a string. We normally have this kind of library, this kind of files in the libraries, right? So it's a chore update version file on release. And let's release uh, this version. Now you're already familiar with the process. So uh, it's next version is correct. And again, you precast and version changes there. So you can see the change here. And actually you can see the new file is created as we expected. So it's working correctly. So you can uh, just merge the pre-request and it will release the next version. And uh, if you see the documentation, there are a bunch of useful configurations and uh, which you can take a look later. So I'm not going to I'll show you everything right now. So let's go back to the slide. We are almost done, by the way. So, as you see in the first video, we have a command ship.js setup, and it helps you set up ship.js into your library. And it also uh, gives you a choice to use GitHub Actions. Uh, I focused on Circle CI because I am using it. So that's an easy example for me, but you can definitely use GitHub Actions. And as I said, uh, we have many useful configurations like uh, this in the documentation. And uh, we also have a reference for all configurations. Uh, it means it's highly configurable. And so far, I have been talking about conventional commits and conventional change log. But there's uh, one thing that I could do in the near future is if you are using like emoji based comment messages instead of that conventional commit, then uh, I could add a new uh, config to ship.js so that you can use whatever convention you want. So it's a very highly configurable tool. And uh, thanks to all these wonderful people who contributed to the library, so that now it's very uh, highly configurable and very uh, useful tool, I guess. So ship.js, uh, it's not about the tool. Actually, it's about the process. So 
you can contribute to ship.js or you can just feel free to steal this idea and make something for other languages yeah i recommend you to do that because i'd like to see that happening and this is uh, just a tool for this better process and i think we should have a better process if we like to so just steal this idea and make tools for other languages and just let me know because i want to see yeah i'll be very excited to see that so I hope you enjoy your release uh, even on Thursday or Friday. And thank you for listening to this talk. And uh, you can reach out to me at Twitter. I'm pretty active on Twitter at inje underscore Lee. And you can, we have an account for ShipJS as well. So you can follow ShipJS as well. So thanks again for listening to my talk. All right. Yeah. Thanks for your talk. This was awesome. Awesome. Uh, okay, guys, don't forget to ask your question in the Telegram chat. We're waiting your questions. Mike, you can start. Okay, so uh, as I see, there is not a lot of questions in the chat right now. And the person who wanted to ask something already found the answer in the documentation. So I guess it's a good thing <laughs> regarding documentation, I mean. So uh, while you know, you're know you in the process of making the question, you can ask them in Russian also. I will translate them for you. And I just you know ask the question just by myself. But please feel free, don't be shy, ask questions. Uh, yeah. So first of all, uh, I wanted to ask you about, you know, how it started. How long uh, have you been working on, on the project? So it started uh, almost a year ago. And at Agulia, we have something called Offsprint. So once a month, uh, the last, every last Friday of month, uh, we take a all of us take a day off and we do whatever we want to do, like uh, learning new language or contributing to open source libraries or reading some documentations and uh, whatever we want to do. So at the time, uh, I wanted to have this kind of tool and I already had that idea. So I took the time to invest to create ShipJS and of course, I couldn't uh, do much in a day, but uh, I was able to build a, a point of concept. So after that, uh, I took some more time and I think it took uh, some weeks to release the first public version. And since then, I've been maintaining ShipJS with ShipJS. Oh, that's great. So uh, the thing about like Friday, last Friday of the month, you do some you know project by yourself. It's it's an Algolia thing, right? Yes, yes. Oh, that's I guess that's a cool company to work for. Uh, I, I will try you know to integrate this kind of stuff in, in my company, and you know the audience I you know I I want to to try to do this too, because I think, yeah, that's a cool thing. I haven't heard of it because, you know, uh, I heard of like Google uh, giving you 20 or 30% of the time to do your own stuff, but in like much smaller companies and like more realistic. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and, and we so, have like, so uh, last time we, sometimes there are themes so uh, like two months ago, there was not two months ago, more than that. But anyway, we had like uh, open source contributing off sprint. So it was basically a little bit of 
competition between uh, the people. So we teamed up and uh, each team decided to contribute to uh, certain open source libraries and we created pull request. And at the end of the day, uh, kind of uh, there is a judge to uh, evaluate the competition, the contribution, and the winner got the prize, which is uh, not actual prize for them, but uh, a right to uh, donate to a certain open source library. So it was really uh, fun and also meaningful. Great. Um, another question I wanted to ask you about. Because you were talking about uh, that you you know run the tests and stuff uh, on your machine and you are blocked and you you know just like switch into Twitter or something like this and then you get back after I don't know like half an hour <laughs> and then it finished and like the worst thing it didn't finish and it falls with an error so we need to do this over again. Yes. But as I understand. Um, you know, Circle CI or just, you know, CI server doesn't solve this problem because, okay, instead of like running on your own machine, you run this remotely. But if you need, you know, to know that uh, the build is completed, it doesn't automatically, you know, notify it, notify you. So what tricks do you use? So, uh... Let me explain more about how I release Ship.js. So I have this uh, specific configuration in my Circle CI. So every Tuesday, 11 a.m., my Circle CI will run Ship.js prepare, which is the part one. So it just runs uh, Ship.js prepare, and when it's finished, a new pull request is created. And when new pull request is created, uh, I have a configuration to assign my team members as a reviewer in the pull request. So we receive the notification. So uh, let's go back. So I'm doing nothing. And I suddenly receive an email saying new release is prepared, new pull request is cre created. So I go to GitHub and uh, I open the PR and I review and my teammates are reviewing that. And then uh, when we approve it and merge it, then Circle CI will be triggered again and it will run ship.js trigger. And after it's done, uh, I added another config so after it's done, it's notifying me in Slack. So if I just put Slack incoming hook as an environment variable, then ShipJS automatically notifies you uh, in the Slack when the pull request is prepared and when the release is finished. So I get two notif notifications and that's how I uh, don't care about the release much and just to re review the PR. Yeah, that's it. Hmm, that, that's a really nice idea, you know, to to do the the PR, you know, by cron like every 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 week or like two two times a week. Because yeah, I personally have this kind of problem by myself with maintaining my own libraries, and I, I'm really looking forward to integrate the ShipGS because. Right now, it's yeah, kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, and so um, sometimes, you know, you do stuff, uh, you fix the bugs or something like that, and you need to release it some at some point of time. But no one actually, you know, defines this point of time. So you need to, you know, to remember this all by yourself. And I've seen many cases when I go to to, to GitHub repo. And I see that like the bug is fixed or some problem is fixed, but it's yet to be a release in the NPM. So I can't use it right now. So I need to, you know, ask to, to push the release. I can fork it, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's a pain. And if you, you know, just create a schedule, basically that will uh, force you to, to release 
doing your release. Yeah, so that's that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really uh, releasing is not that big a deal, but we just kind of for some reason don't want to do that. And after fixing the bug, and oh, okay, I'll release it later. And yeah, we don't do that. And uh, the reason why I uh, set the cron job for uh, releasing ShipJS on Tuesday morning is like, you know, I'm tired on Monday and Tuesday I'm relatively better than Monday. So in the Tuesday morning uh, with my uh, refreshed brain, I review the PR and when I think it's good, I just uh, squash and merge and it's done. And so it's uh, like receiving an email and confirming something. It's not, it's no longer like scary release process. Oh yeah. And, uh, the next thing I want to ask you about is, um, is that how did you came up with an idea of like intermediate step, uh, between, uh, between like preparing the release, creating the pull requests, which is like an intermediate step, a step to, you know, pause and, and think about it and check stuff and, you know, do manual testing. So how you came up with this idea? Because I've never seen this in the wild uh, by release library side. So yeah. Uh, actually, when I was uh, in 2018, I was working on a website. Uh, at the time I was using Vue.js uh, for the front end and I was using Ruby on Rails for the back end. And I, I always like uh, using tools and automate things so that I don't have to do that. And uh, when releasing applications, uh, it's very natural to use CI tools. So at the time I also used uh, Circle CI to release the Ruby on Rails application, and I'm not sure about the Ruby on the backend right now. But anyway, uh, for sure, I used uh, Circle CI to release Vue.js application at the time. So at the time, I released that uh, front end uh, from Circle CI to AWS, and I was like, okay to trigger the circle CI to release something, then I might need to add a new commit so that the CI can know. And, but I don't want to like uh, run it, release it every time I push a new commit. So I should have some sort of special commit to trigger the release. So I had that idea and I, at the time I, wrote a very short script, which is like half-baked baked solution. And then late, two years later, uh, in instant search, uh, I had the same problem. And I was uh, reminded of that idea. So what? why don't I use this idea to releasing libraries? And I thought about that and there's uh, absolutely no reason not to do that. So. I gave it a try and yeah, it worked. Yeah, I do feel that too, because, um, you know, uh, that's a lot of stuff happening when you're releasing like a big app, like an application. And usually, for example, we do have this workflow at, at our project. So uh, to do the release, we create a pull request to, to a release branch. We deploys this branch to do some pre-production environment and, you know, do some manual tests like the smoke ones. And, and yeah, that's basically it. We don't use like conventional commits and change log, but we are looking forward to it and, and like adapt this idea for library and just, you know, throwing up all of the hassle away. It's yeah. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> and by the way, um, so how much of the work time you're dedicating to ShipGS right now? Do you work on this full time or just like, you know, 50% of the time and as of 50% is instant search? 
Uh, actually, I did not put that much of time into ShipJS uh, because for now it's, uh, I think it's quite stable. And if I want to put tons of new features, then I should invest more. But now it's uh, usable for the requirements that we have so far. And sometimes uh, community members are coming to the repository and ask for a new feature and I talk with them and sometimes I do the work or they want to contribute. So I help them to contribute to ShipJS. So uh, at Algolia, I mainly work for instance search and a little bit with ShipJS continuously. All right. And we have our first question from the audience. Uh, so Victor asks, can I configure this tool to publish in a, to a private NPM registry? Yes. Uh, when you release a library uh, as a private one, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I was mistaken. Uh, actually, I haven't released something as a private library. So if you can do that uh, on your machine, then I don't see no reason uh, not to do that with ShipJS, but I should definitely need to uh, test it because uh, so far I have been working on uh, public open source libraries, so I haven't tested it yet. I'm sure it will uh, But at least is, is there a possibility to change the, the registry URL? Uh, for now, it's not, but, uh, yeah, we can do that because, uh, in the configuration of ShipJS, you can override publish command, which is by default, uh, NPM publish or yarn publish. But if you have your specific need, then you can override this command. So you can put whatever, uh, command there and uh, even uh, if it's not a library at all, and uh, if you are just releasing some websites with ShipJS, you can put uh, your own command there, like uh, Versal or like releasing it to S AWS S3, something like that. So uh, it's by default uh, meant, to, meant to release to NPM registry, but you can override the publish command. So so that you can release to wherever with whatever command you want. Yeah, and I also guess that you can change uh, like npm registry somewhere in the .npmrc file. I guess there is like an end variable for that. For, for that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, but I, I'm pretty sure that there is. <laughs> All right, so I have one more question. Uh, one more question from myself, which is: um, So, how many? Uh, what is like the the point of extensions in 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 ShipGS? Uh, for example, you already talked about uh, talked about the the possibility to change conventional commits to emoji commits. Uh, you already said that you can, you know, change the, the publish command to anything you like. Uh, what is, what, what are the other parts, you know, you can hook up into and change something? So, uh, if you create a file ship.config.js in your repository, then ship.js will read the file and you can put uh, lots of configurations there and uh, in the future uh, i could add some config like uh, override uh, commit conventions or something like that so that you can enable emoji based commits and uh, for now i have uh, something like uh, version updated which i showed in the video earlier or before commit changes, the before commit changes, that lifecycle hook method is used when, for example, you want to uh, update the table of contents 
in your readme.markdown. So you from time to time update the readme file, but you forget uh, to update the table of contents. But if you put the script into before uh, commit changes, then ShiftJS will update it for you so that you can uh, don't have to think about nitty gritty tasks. Oh yeah, great. Because uh, I've seen uh, a couple of libraries that use, uh, you know, some sort of like change log, not change log dot MD as, uh, as, in, as, as in usual, but you know, some other format. And then its format goes to, to a website using some systems like Docuzaurus or something like this. And so if you can, you know, take this change log and, and put it there automatically, then yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, so um, I guess so, so we have like, yeah. Uh, so uh, I think our time has come to an end and uh, as a, uh, all can join to the discussion zone and uh, ask any other questions. Uh, all you can you can find link uh, to the discussion zone in the chat and under the video. Uh, big thank for your talk. Uh, big, th big thank uh, for your questions, Mike. Uh, uh, have a good uh, discussion zone. Thank you. Thank you.